Hi, today's episode of We Are Only One is brought to you by Mount Gox, mtgox.com, and usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN, and Meze Grill, M-E-Z-E-G-R-I-L-L.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Episode 5 of We Are Only One. I'm Jude Byrne, and today I am very honored and happy to have as my guest, Angela Trapp. <clears throat> Angela is a health and wellness coach mm -hmm. and a psychotherapist, and she's also the loving wife of Reverend Dr. James Trapp, the CEO of Unity Worldwide Ministries, and the loving mother of Jalen Trapp. Welcome, Angela. It's wonderful to be here, too. Wonderful. Oh. So uh, I know you're not living in New York. I uh, wish, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not yet. Let's, not not let's yet. Put not it yet. That not way. yet. What brings you to Manhattan? Well, um, we've had the wonderful opportunity, Jalen and I, my son, to um, attend New York Film Academy's um, summer camp for filmmaking. Wow. So we have been here all week since Sunday, just enjoying the sights and shopping and enjoying the food. And um, Jalen has had a fabulous time in camp. Great. Um, today's we're going to be talking a lot about, and Angela is walking the talk, <laughs> the importance of parents supporting their child's dreams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their gifts and their talents. Um, and I'm sure many parents are going to find this very interesting. And I'm going to talk to supporting your inner child's dream since I don't mm -hmm. have any physical children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that works too. Yeah. <laughs> that works as well. So uh, tell me um, why you're such a staunch advocate of this and, and how you've come to this. I think, um, like many things, it's your, uh, it comes from a personal experience of growing up. Um, my, my parents supported my dreams, but I think I got two different messages. Um, they would show up, well, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, my talent was acting, and I found that out very early on in life. Um, and my mom would definitely support me in terms of showing up at every play and every you know event and everything but I think she also gave us the message that we also needed to go to college and so I had these two messages going on mm -hmm. I knew what my um, passion was but at the same time you know being a good parent wanting your child to grow up and be able to be independent and take care of themselves you know she was like one of those people that just said you need to go to college and it wasn't an option in the house. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. And I did it for a long time because it was not what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that experience, um, growing up, um, pursuing something that really wasn't um, something that my soul and spirit really wanted to do, it kind of, um, not kind of, it absolutely made me passionate about finding what my child's gift was early on in mm -hmm. life and um, in his life in supporting that, fully supporting it, mm -hmm. nurturing those gifts mm -hmm. and not trying to create him into something that I wanted him to be. And what a gift that is for him. I think so. I like to think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how did you... Was it obvious what, what he was drawn to, what his interests were? Um, it kind of, I, I have to say, yeah, it kind of was. Um, I remember reading, and I'm not sure the author of the book, but they said something to the effect of looking um, at what your child gravitates to naturally. Mm -hmm. Like, what do they gravitate to naturally? And that's a hint. It's a clue. And for Jalen, it was acting. Mm -hmm. It was just acting. How about that? Um, yeah. And, and um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we just immediately once, you know, we identified that or became aware of that, we just started to put him in acting classes and, and supporting, supporting that talent and that gift. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, what would you say to parents who, who might not know um, 
you know, are there certain clues? Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a fellow named Howard Gardner. Gardner Howard Gardner, yes. Who yeah. talks about different intelligences. Yes, yeah. That, um, his work, Howard Gardner's work, I found fascinating uh, because it introduces a whole nother way, unique way of looking at how we learn. Mm -hmm. And um, also that there's more mm -hmm. than one intelligence. There's many different ways to be intelligent. And once you discover that person's strength, then you can teach them to that particular quality. Like some of us are verbal. Um, I mean, there, there's seven, and I'm not quite, I don't know exactly the, the list of seven, but um, you can be um, musically inclined. And for example, if music is your thing, you might want to have background music playing when you study. Um, if you're visual, for example, uh, instead of your study cards, your little study cards being just white, you may want to have them colorful. Mm -hmm. These are all tools <clears throat> just to help you learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when we were speaking earlier in the show, so I, I checked out uh, Howard Gardner, okay. and uh, I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he also said there was touch, and uh, that could either be the sign of a dancer, someone mm -hmm. who's really physical with their body, or it could be the sign of a surgeon. Exactly. <clears throat> which is very interesting contrast, too. Right. Um, so it might not be quite as predictable where people are going to end up for mm -hmm. what they're responding to, but I thought it was really important that um, I think in our schools we've emphasized, and I know you're an educator, too, mm -hmm. We've emphasized the, the linguistic ability and, and perhaps the mathematical second, but we haven't really tuned into some of the more, uh, you know, um, more subtle ones, mm -hmm. like the music. Right. And I think that's why uh, mixed media works so well. Yes, exactly. And, and things like only one TV. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Because if you're not hitting one kind of intelligence, mm -hmm. you might be hitting something else that's, that's communicating to people. Precisely, yeah. precisely. So it would be fabulous if our schools would, um, all of them would adopt <laughs> um, his theory, I think. Yes. I, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, what a blessing for Jalen that you um, supporting mm -hmm. him like this. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think all parents and, you know, have a desire to support their children. And, and I really, as I've traveled and spoken to different parents, I think more and more parents are realizing that, you know, I'm going to support, you know, my child's dream and not try to force what I think is right mm -hmm. on, on them. And um, several parents at the camp um, that Jalen attended this week, it was just mm -hmm. fabulous. They had flown from all over just, you know, to be there and to bring their children. Hey, it was acting and it was also filmmaking. So. It was wonderful to sit down and, and speak with parents who are supporting their children's dreams. I'm, I'm sure that part of uh, the challenge may be uh, the parent not coming to terms with their own uh, mm -hmm. feelings about that or perhaps fears of, especially if it's more artistic pursuit. Sure. Um, and I know we had that in my family too. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> my sister is an artist and uh, she knew from a very early age she wanted to be an artist mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> my parents were very big in education like yours so uh, uh, art school was not an option before <laughs> college mm -hmm. college had to come first right and exactly. so she followed the pragmatic for my parents <laughs> <laughs> got a teaching degree was assigned to a school in that was very, very rough and ended up going to art school and fulfilling her dream as a commercial artist. That's wonderful. So she knew. And I think when, when we uh, have that, that when, especially when you see it in a child, um, but also I'm going to talk about adults too. Um, sure. You know, Absolutely. but as a, as a child, when you see that, to, that is, a, I think, a special spirit speaking through that child right that's a the child's spirit and i agree i agree and you, sometimes it's very subtle yes. and so a parent might you know overlook it or miss it so mm -hmm. a part of that challenge is being very aware um and so you can capture it 
because mm -hmm. it's not. I mean, sometimes people, you know, they come here and they just absolutely know from birth. Exact. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to, you know, a lawyer, a surgeon. Um, but I think there is the other section of people, sect of people like myself, and you're just kind of <laughs> clueless, you, you know. Um, and then also the other part of that is it might not be the traditional profession. Right. And then that's where you come into, um, do I really pursue this? Am I going to be able to um, support myself? You, you know, and I think that's that background fear, talking, speaking, and keeps us from following our dreams. It's like, I mean, is this really going to be possible? You mm -hmm. know, maybe I should really get that nine to five job, even though I don't like it. Right. It's nine to five, great benefits. It's guaranteed. It's certain, even though I'm unhappy there. Right. Yeah. So can you talk about what helped you uh, come to terms with the fact to trust your inner voice? Um, was it anything to do with the Unity Worldwide Ministries? Absolutely. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> um, when I um, found Unity, or I probably should say Unity found me, we found each other, mm -hmm. that was um, one of the greatest turning points of my life. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful message about, um, you know, we're, we're wonderful, unique expressions of God, so um, I'm, I'm God's great idea. I mean, mm -hmm. what, a, what an amazing message that is. I am God's great idea. And um, with that knowledge, um, with that awareness, I was able to shift from safety and limitations, mm -hmm. I should say, mm -hmm. and um, embrace infinite possibilities, yeah. mm. Mm -hmm. which allowed me to step out on faith on several different um, areas, in several different areas in my life. That is a gift. I have had the um, honor mm -hmm. of hearing your husband, Reverend James Trapp, speak several mm -hmm. times and uh, down at Unity on the Bay. Yes. And um, I've traveled to hear him speak. He's very inspiring. And I think that's such a gift. I have had that same experience where <clears throat> you go from feeling um, maybe there are a couple of possibilities to the world is our oyster, right? There are exactly. infinite amount of possibilities if we have the faith and trust mm -hmm. and listen. And for me, the biggest challenge is um, getting out of my own way <laughs> <laughs> and being still and mm -hmm. listening, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think you, mm -hmm. you're listening for yourself and yes. you're listening for your son, which is Beautiful. And I'm teaching him, I think more importantly, I'm teaching him how to listen for himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we do as a family is um, we, Jalen was very young when he started doing this, is but creating a vision map, you know, treasure mapping. He's been treasure mapping since he was probably six or seven years old. And... Mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar with treasure mapping, I'm sure you are, but it's basically creating a visual, um, I, I guess, uh, in visual project. Um, it can be pictures, affirmations, different things that you would like to see come into manifestation for you. Mm -hmm. And so we started, we taught Jalen that at the age of six, and he's continued to do that and make that a part of his process. Um, yes. I remember one time in sixth grade, he was struggling um, with paying attention, according to his teachers. Um, and so <laughs> like he would have an affirmation on his um, treasure map that basically said, I am a great listener. I mean, he was six, so it was pretty simple. But this was something that he would wake up in the morning and look at every single morning and read his affirmations, um, look at his pictures. And that's how he would start his day. So you're wow. just never too young to start the principles and practices. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, I know for myself, mm -hmm. when you were speaking about, I was not one of those people who, who came out focused. Still focused, yeah. <laughs> I have so many interests mm -hmm. that, um, and been blessed 
to be able to explore different things that it was very confusing for me. Um, what am I going to do that will be most fulfilling for me? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, the way the show came about, which was awesome. Um, uh, the, doing this show is a gift for me mm -hmm. and it combines so many things that I love and I'm interested in. And it, um, it came about through being quiet and asking for guidance and um, then being connected to the owners, Bruce and Ed, and, and their vision of only one TV and that we are only one. Exactly. And, and sending this out to across the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, but I think that sometimes the practical does get, we of need course. to balance the gifts and the inner voice with the practical, but I think quite often in our society, it has been the leader, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It, it, it's been out of balance the other way. Right. And, and mm -hmm. so many people, I wonder if you could talk about a little, your experiences as a, a, a wellness and health coach, you mm -hmm. see people, um, I've always felt that um, when you're divided, that's, that's where you, your body can, your, your spirit's in dis-ease, mm -hmm. and so your body's going to manifest that exactly. if you don't listen to it. Exactly, you know? exactly. I, I believe that as well. Mm -hmm. I believe that that's the universe way of reminding you that you are off course, mm -hmm. that you um, um, are not l doing that lowly listening and, um, and following the guidance of spirit. Um, one of the things that I found out, just working with um, individuals, and most of the people that I work with are very successful professional people. Mm -hmm. So when you look at someone and they're a, a successful doctor, lawyer, or whatever, you're thinking, wow, that person must really be happy. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, working with that particular individual, I would find out that... No, many of them were very unhappy, very successful, mm -hmm. worldly success, mm -hmm. but inner, just really, just really sad. Um, and sometimes what would come up in the conversation is for me, because I'm always about, well, what is it that you really wanted to do? Or what did you like to do when you were a kid? And, um, you know, oftentimes I would get a response. Well, I really wanted to be a musician. Or I really wanted to be an actress or an artist. And I would ask, well, what happened? What happened? Why didn't you follow that? Mm -hmm. And typically the response was, well, my parents told me that I needed to get a real job. I needed to do something that was going to support me. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, was totally coming from love of a parent, mm -hmm. concerned about sure. their child. Sure. Um, but I think as a result of that, that dream or that natural ability, those natural talents were kind of, you know, not kind of, were definitely put in the back pocket and the, on the back burner. And mm -hmm. so you went the safe course, mm -hmm. you know, even though you worked very hard to achieve what you, you know, have succeeded in, still there's this little part of just unhappy, unfulfilled, you know, just unfulfilled. And sometimes you don't even know what it is. You just know that, gosh, I'm just, you know, I just don't feel 100% here. Mm -hmm. I think it's like you're leaking some energy. Yes. But you just can't figure it out. Yes. You know, you said um, playing it safe. Playing um, it safe. One of my favorite quotes from the movie Moonstruck <laughs> with Cher is when Nicolas Cage says to her, playing it safe is one of the most dangerous things a girl like you can do. I love that. <laughs> and I think that's really true. Mm -hmm for our heart and our soul, you mm -hmm. know, um, because it's, it's not allowing us to really extend ourselves into mm -hmm. the, the magnitude mm -hmm. of, of who to, we really yeah, are. To expand. You know, right. and I wonder, since, since you're in the flow with uh, encouraging and supporting mm -hmm. your child so well, what could you tell a parent who is just 
really concerned, uh, especially if their child is artistic mm -hmm. and um, in, an, in an area where they feel that the chances are not as good uh, to make a living. What would you tell that parent? I would say to um, do your research and find um, programs that would support your child's talent. Mm -hmm. And there are, so, there are so many different programs out there. There are programs that cost a lot of money, and then there are programs that um, are, don't have a cost attached to them at all. Um, one of the things that Jalen did is that volunteering, volunteering mm -hmm. somewhere. You know, if you can't afford um, that particular um, program, asking, can I volunteer? Can my child mm -hmm. volunteer? Can I volunteer? Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity. And then really the being aware, kind of listening to your child and being aware to find out what those gifts are because sometimes the gifts are not so obvious. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think um, many adults, uh, myself included, have been going through different reinventings. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps uh, I have friends who um, have played the practical route mm -hmm. and then just one day just really couldn't stand it anymore <laughs> and took the leap of faith and um, followed their heart's desire. and. Um, and interestingly enough, in the arts, mm -hmm. um, and um, are very successful and very happy. But it takes, it takes that leap. Uh, you know, there's um, uh, the difference between staying asleep or taking the leap of mm -hmm. faith, you mm -hmm. know. But I think children, it's so imperative uh, for the parent to be behind them, be, or Absolutely. else they feel a conflict, right. you know. Unsupported and not supported, yeah, right? Exactly. And yeah. uh, we know that self-esteem is, is, <laughs> is really critical. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you about that after we thank our sponsors for allowing us to follow our dreams. So um, first up, I would like to thank Mount Gox. It's an online exchange service for Bitcoins. And they are now taking Euros and the British Pound and the Australian Dollar and uh, soon the Canadian Dollar. And uh, we hope that you will catch our show at 2 p.m. with Bruce Wagner, the Bitcoin show. And usgoldcoins.com, 1-800-HOT-COIN. Our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. Andy takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold. He will hold your hand. So check him out at 1-800-HOT-COIN for the current inventory. And Meze Grill, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. They have fabulous tabbouleh, hummus, uh, we eat there a lot, and it is great. I can testify to that. And they are now serving breakfast. They're located at 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City, just a couple of blocks south of Columbus Circle. So thank you all for allowing us to pursue our dreams here at Only One TV. So self-esteem. Mm -hmm. mm, that's something I think... Um, that can make or break a life. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I've worn many hats, an educator, guidance counselor. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of my favorite jobs is a guidance counselor, and I was a guidance counselor at a high school in Florida. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. uh, that was exciting. <laughs> I love teenagers. <laughs> Good for I you. Know I know it's rare. I'm sure weird. they love you. <laughs> They can feel the love. I they bet. can feel the love. And, and actually, that's um, one of the things that I became aware of instantly uh, is that that is exactly what they needed. Mm -hmm. Love, mm -hmm. affirmation, and attention. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I would have these, um, what can I say, very mature girls kind of hang out around my office uh -huh. and young men who were, um, I guess, trying to be gangsters or something. I can't, you know, <laughs> with the saggy pants and so forth and so on. And they would just kind of hang by my doors. And these are supposed to be the really rough, tough kids. Mm -hmm. But really, all they wanted from me was, what are you doing? How are you today? What are you up to? Uh -huh. And that's when I realized they're just starved for attention. Starved for attention, mm -hmm. um, validation. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in their life, they, you know, that was missing. That yes. was missing. That part was missing. And that's so crucial when you're growing up, and especially when you're an adolescent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes parents, um, not all parents, I mean, parents, you know, we're all doing the best we can. Um, sometimes parents, I think, though, kind of forget that even though you're 15 or 16 years old, you still would like to hear the word, I love you. Yes. Yeah. Like, I love you. Mm -hmm. All the material things are taken care of, but the kids, they still want to hear that. Yes, I, you know, love is, um, I was thinking when you were speaking earlier, uh, differentiating between financial success mm -hmm. and yet um, the unhappiness. So is it of, of these people mm -hmm. who have hit the top of their profession, but <clears throat> inside they're not happy, so... Are they really successful, you know? And um, I've traveled a lot, um, been blessed to have gone to some third world countries uh, that um, in financial terms would not be considered um, too prosperous, if you will. And there was so much love with the people and among the people. And uh, um, their way of life, very different, you know, living very close to the earth, sometimes in straw huts or, or uh, clay huts, and so happy. And, and um, looking at the families, uh, the interaction mm -hmm. together to me is a, a real sign of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And in the airport, seeing um, the mother and the father and the child all happy and you know, embracing each other and being loving and no lack of communicating that love right. and um, uh, a, a different emphasis mm -hmm. and, and I think right now um, with the shifting sands mm -hmm. of our society and our consciousness uh, how key it is uh, as you say to, to be mindful of how important love is and to communicate that mm -hmm. to not, you know, our children and to our friends and to mm -hmm. our loved ones and um, to ourselves. <laughs> First and foremost, and too. Self-love. Self-love is, is key. And um, if we've been raised in a traditional religion, uh, quite often we haven't gotten that message. You know, we've, we've gotten myself, um, I won't name because I don't want... I'm not into any kind of blame, mm -hmm. but I was raised with a, a set of beliefs that um, we weren't worthy to begin with. And um, one time I went to Unity and I heard the term original blessing, and that just opened my heart. And um, the teachings of Unity mm -hmm. in particular, um, and new thought, higher consciousness oriented um, centers, I think are doing a world of good for people who maybe didn't get early messages of worthiness, self-love. And um, once you feel more grounded, myself, um, then you can take on so much more and enjoy so much more of life and, and see there is so much more of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like taking the blinders off. You know, and, and, and share that love with everyone else. Yeah. Share that love. Yeah. It's important. So are you keeping a uh, library of Jalen's uh, dream boards? And <laughs> <laughs> that to me would be like a, a very... Yes, I am. Yes, 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 I am. I am. Yes, 
it's going to be interesting, I think, for him when he becomes a man <laughs> and look back yeah. on that. Yes. Yeah. That's a great thing. Uh-huh. Um, he's a great kid, and not just because he's my kid. He's a great kid because he's in, he was grounded and is growing up in knowing universal principles. You know, yeah. principles. Mm -hmm. And um, he's 12 years old, and he applies them daily in his life. Mm -hmm. I just wish someone would have um, shared those principles with me when I was a little girl. I often wonder why, what kind of adult I would have been. I would have known this as a child. Yes. You know, to be wrapped in power. Yes. You know, to know that I am magnificent and unique and loved by God. Loved. No matter what I do, I am loved. Yes. How empowering. It really is, and, and for our listeners who are not that familiar, I, I wanted to kind of go sure. through them. Um, first one is that God is good all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the second, that we are divine sparks of God, mm -hmm. and so we are good. Mm -hmm. And that just opens up so mm -hmm. much. And um, the third one is the law of mind action. Law of mind action. Right. That our thoughts... Create our reality. Create our reality. And the fourth one is that is it prayer and meditation. And meditation mm -hmm. are our way to communion with the divine source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth one, which Angela is doing, walking the talk, walking right? the talk, and taking those principles out into the community, right? Right. Like practical Christianity. That's practical. why it's called practical Christianity. Christianity. Yes. Yes. And it's a nice combination of, of what we're speaking of, that balance mm -hmm. of, of listening and fulfilling your dreams and, right. and uh, doing it in a way that you, you are in the world. Mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. that really um, just gave me a whole new outlook and and it's uh, hope is so important I think mm -hmm. um, especially today with a lot of the uh, surface insanity that's going on <laughs> um, to hold on to those truth principles mm -hmm. and and realize not only are there lessons but there are blessings in whatever is going on right right and and that can be a good good stretch <laughs> <laughs> it is a stretch right now i think with what's going on but it is absolutely i believe the truth yeah. um but this is the opportunity for us to really um turn to principle more than ever turn to principle what we know works prayer affirmation listening going into the silence and listening for that guidance and trusting that everything, even though it appears to be chaos, is in divine order. And that's a big one, the swallow. That is a big one. <laughs> that is huge. Yeah, it is. Um, you could chunk it down and yeah. move it a little bite size. <laughs> but it really does help. It does. When we really embrace that. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I found uh, it lifts the vibration, you know, and when, when we lift the vibration by, through prayer and meditation or through doing something that we feel is one of our gifts or one of our dreams at whatever level. It doesn't have to be uh, on stage in front of thousands of people. It could just mm -hmm. be in our living room doing something we like, drawing or writing or mm -hmm. dancing or doing math or doing a computer program, whatever it is that, that uh, you know, is your bliss, right? Your Follow bliss. your bliss. Yeah. Then it, it takes you to, to a place, I think, where you're more resonating with, mm -hmm. with uh, source and, and uh, who you really, who we really are. Mm -hmm. And then um, it helps us have more spaciousness mm -hmm. to deal with some of the worldly challenges, mm -hmm. you know? And I think then your energy is at a certain level. And so then you will attract people that have about some consciousness. But not only that, you are able to spread that truth and that consciousness to everyone that you meet. And it's not, not, not exactly saying it, it's being it. Yeah. So you don't have to walk around, you know, giving speeches or, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> Other you, know you, do. Um, you are being it, yeah. and I think that's the greatest difference with unity. Um, you don't have to say, you know, I'm a child of God, or I'm this or that. You know, I can look at you and say, what is she connected to? She, this light is coming from her. You know, she's mm -hmm. loving and kind and patient. What's going on with her? <laughs> You know, uh -huh. and you did not give me a lecture and try to hand me literature. You're just being great. You're being magnificent. Mm -hmm. And you're encouraging your son mm -hmm. to be his magnificent self. Absolutely. And then I'm trying. Who, whomever, I'm <laughs> <laughs> whomever he encounters, yes. he's, he's going to share that with too. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, I mean, it's just a ripple effect. That's right. Globally. We're all connected. You know we that. are. We're we connected. are. Only one TV. That's <laughs> right. We're interconnected. We are only one. Yes. Yeah. I think that's just um, such a gift that we do have that freedom to, to choose again. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if, if you see yourself, uh, maybe you're dancing to a different uh, song than mm -hmm. you really are hearing. <laughs> And so you're not necessarily dancing as well as you might, you know, to kind of revisit that. You have the power to change it. Yeah. Absolutely. I wanted to share um, um, just one of, one of the, I do many different oh, please. little, um, what can I say, rituals <laughs> with Jalen. Yeah. And one of the things that we've done all of his mm -hmm. life, but um, in particular when he started to go to school, mm -hmm. is that um, before he leaves the car, so this has been going on since five years old, he's getting ready to get out of the car, and um, my question is always, who are you, Jalen? Who are you? And he replies, I am in, I'm Jalen Mandela Trap, a magnificent child of God. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And so he leaves my car with that in his mind. That is his affirmation throughout the day. And I'm, sometimes I might say, well, what does that mean? And he'll go on to say, you know, I can do anything. God loves me. I'm, you know, I'm a great student. But um, I just love that because I, that, I'm like, okay, whatever happens throughout this day, I know that he walked out of my car knowing the truth of his being. That is so mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's see it. You are Angela Traff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Loving child of God. We and can do that for ourselves in the mirror in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yes. So for a few seconds at least we're in touch with the real truth exactly. of our being. Exactly. And uh, what a different day that will be, I'm sure, you know, planting those seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so important uh, right now in particular, I think. So. I think. Yeah. Um, have you... Um, 
had challenges where where you've um, come across um, either an adult or or a child that you just feel it's really hard for them to get through to them um, you know like how would you what do you do you think love the loving kindness is the is the best approach you know mm -hmm. like some people just have such a shield up of defensiveness mm -hmm. and I don't want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> or you know and and it's probably from fear mm -hmm. and pr protecting themselves mm -hmm. you know um, can you give us any uh, ideas on how to break through that how do you it's how funny. do you deal with that um, it's going to sound very simple but one of the things that I found really works mm -hmm. is a compliment mm -hmm. is to start the um, interaction with a compliment and it can be so simple mm -hmm. I love your earrings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes when you walk in the room you can kind of feel the energy it's yeah. just like yeah. yeah, and for women, I don't know why. Sometimes it's just like darts are, you know, it's just like not literally, but darts are just coming at you, and you can feel that energy. Yeah, and so to move beyond that, yeah. Um, sometimes I will just go up to the person and say, "Oh, I love your earrings," and I can feel the vibration. I can feel the vibration shift. Mm -hmm. I can feel that love well, that you're saying that. Some people pull up coming down. Just, mm -hmm. just that. That's the opening. Mm -hmm. That's just the opening. And then going through that opening and expanding that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It does shift. I've had that experience. It's it shifts amazing. really quickly, it's amazing. doesn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Some of us are just walking around very guarded, very much in fear. Yes. And, and I've, I've seen that. Lately, um, some crazy interactions between people that kind of have come up out of nowhere. And it, since we are all connected, mm -hmm. you know, I, um, I believe it is really important to, like you said, be sending out that love mm -hmm. or that higher vibration um, yeah. so that we can stay mindful mm -hmm. of the loving spirit inside of who mm -hmm. we really are and mm -hmm. and not get lost in some other detour right you right. know energetically right. and um, and in our world today again that you know it's challenging mm -hmm. um but i feel that that's um uh, well, you know, reason why we are supposed to go deeper into our principles and our practices yeah Demonstrating by being here in the city and mm -hmm. supporting Jalen and coming and, and um, the work that you're doing and uh, the work that your husband is doing is sending out such wonderful vibrations to the planet. And um, I want to thank you. You're <laughs> very welcome. For being here and gracing us with your presence. It has been on this my show. pleasure. Really, it's a gift. For me, so thank you. Oh, thank you. We are one. Yes, we are. We are one. Yeah. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the time here, and I look forward to uh, seeing some of Jalen's films in the future, <laughs> and also um, having your husband on the show too. Yes. When we come back with him. We'd love to. Great. Well, have a beautiful, blessed week, everybody.